Selvom det efterhånden vrimler med konspirationsteorier om stort set alt, så er mordet på John F. Kennedy stadig den store klassiker. Selv i dag, mere end 40 år efter mordet, kommer der hele tiden nye gisninger om, hvem der stod bag. Faktisk var Kennedy-mordet begyndelsen på konspirationsteoriernes storhedstid. Vi har været i Dallas for at få de seneste svar på spørgsmålet, hvem myrdede Kennedy? Dagen begyndte i jubel og glæde scener, da borgerne i Dallas tog mod landets unge karismatiske præsident, John F. Kennedy, og hans kone Jacqueline. Kl. 12.30 drejede Kennedys limousine rundt om Dele Plaza og op af Elm Street. And then all of a sudden I heard a motorcycle backfire. I thought. But it wasn't a motorcycle, it was a shot. And then pretty soon second and a third. Det var århundredets forbrydelse. USA's præsident skudt ned for åbent kamera og for øjnene af hundredvis af mennesker. Kort efter gik det meste af USA i stå, da den legendariske studievært Walter Cronkite kom med det rystende budskab. From Dallas, Texas, the flash apparently official President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. Men dermed var dramaet ikke slut. Kort efter blev en politimand ved navn Tibbet dræbt af pistolskud og en mistænkelig person sned sig ind i en biograf tæt på gerningsstedet. Politiet dukkede op, og lige bag dem var Hughes ensrøde. Han var sitting pretty calmly really until officer McDonald said get up and he said something like it's all over and I thought he was given up but as he went like this he hit the officer. And then they all a couple other people jumped on him and they all rushed him down. The only thing I remember he said only was he kept saying I protest this police brutality. Of course he tried to shoot he pulled a gun and tried to shoot the officer. Kort efter så verden lige har vi Oswald for første gang på politistationen i Dallas. I didn't shoot anybody, sir. I haven't been told what I'm here for. Om søndagen to dage senere skulle Oswald overflyttes til et mere sikkert fiktiv. Da de gik gennem et kaotisk opbud af pressefolk, skete det utænkelige. En tilsyneladende tilfældig natklubejer ved navn Jack Ruby sprang frem og skudte Oswald. Oswald døde kort efter af indre blødninger. Samme dag kom statsledere fra hele verden til Washington for at overvære Kennedys begravelse. Et emotionelt højdepunkt var, da hans søn John John gjorde honør foran sin fars kiste. Imens stod spørgsmålet tilbage. Hvem myrdede USA's 35. præsident? Var det den samme mand, der havde myrdet politimanden Tibbet? Og hvorfor havde Ruby skudt Oswald?
Straks efter mordet på Kennedy gik en hær af politi- og FBI-folk i gang med den mest omfattende efterforskning i kriminalhistorien. Her på skolebogslagerets femte sal, hvor lige Harvey Oswald havde arbejdet, fandt politiet en snigskyttepost af store papkasser, en riffel og tre tomme patronhylstre. Sagen syntes klar. That rifle, we traced it. It was found to have been purchased by Oswald uh, using a fictitious name of A.J. Heidel. There were people on the floor below him that say Oswald was in, up there at the time. They had just left and gone down to the other floors. So there's no doubt that Oswald was on that floor at the time the shots were fired. The uh, right palm print of Oswald was found on the underside of the rifle barrel. There was a bullet found on the stretcher of Governor Conley at Park, Parkland Hospital. And uh, of course he was riding in the limousine with the president. And there were two bullet fragments found in the presidential limousine. All of the, and there were three cartridge cases found up on the sixth floor near the window where the shots were fired. And every one of those through ballistic examination was, were found to have been fired from the Oswald rifle to the exclusion of all other weapons, which is pretty convincing. Desuden forsøgte Oswald at skyde en betjent ved arrestationen, og der var vidneudsagn og tekniske beviser i sagen om mordet på politimanden Tibbet. Hvad Jack Ruby angår, netklubejeren, der skød Oswald, undersøgte FBI, om Oswald var kommet her i Rubys populære netklub, The Carousel Club. Men ingen troværdige vidner havde set de to sammen, her eller andre steder. Ifølge mange konspirationsteorier blev Ruby sendt ud for at gøre Oswald tavs. Måske på ordre for mafiafolk, som han plejede forbindelser med. Ruby selv forklarede, at han havde været stærkt ophidset siden Kennedys død og skudt Oswald efter en pludselig impuls. When I transferred him, I had I asked him, I, I said, I said, to, I rather told him, you didn't do us any favor when you shot Oswald. And he said, Lavelle, I just want to be a hero. And it looks like I just found things up good. There, there is no way in the world that the people watching your show are going to believe that Jack Ruby was just there accidentally. Now I do, and I'll tell you why. The police chief said he would be moved at 10 o'clock not before. If Ruby would have been going to kill him, he would have been there at 10 o'clock or before, but he wasn't. He slept until he got a phone call well after 10 o'clock. Then he leisurely went down to Western Union, sent a $25 Western Union money mail to a stripper of his, and then walked out of Western Union and one block away saw the crowd, and he went to it. My point is that he would not overslept 10 o'clock unless you believe that the police chief and the FBI and everybody else was involved in the conspiracy. Said, well, we don't have to call Ruby till about 10.30, you know. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of murder with malice as charged in the indictment and assess his punishment at death. En kommission med højsteretspræsident Earl Warren i spidsen, her på inspektion i Dallas, blev nedsat til at lede efter forskningen. Warren-rapporten fra 1964 holdt sig alt afgørende til FBI's første rapport lige efter mordet. Lige har vi Oswald var den skyldige, og der blev gættet på flere motiver. In my opinion, and I think in the opinion of a lot of people who have studied his life, will say that he was trying to get recognition, and he finally did. But whether he... Uh That's the kind of recognition he wanted, I don't know. Desuden var den tidligere marinesoldat en social outsider, og han havde flere gange været voldelig over for sin russiske kone Marina. Sidst men ikke mindst nærede Oswald kommunistiske sympatier. Han havde endda boet i Sovjetunionen i to år, som en af efterkrigstidens meget få amerikanske afhoppere. Her i hadet til USA, så Warren-kommissionen 
også et muligt ideologisk motiv. Umiddelbart synes Warren-kommissionen at have en overbevisende sag. Men Kennedy-mordet er berygtet for små detaljer, som synes at falde fra hinanden, når man bruger i dem. Tag for eksempel Oswalds arbejdskollega Bull Frasers udsagn om, at Oswald om morgenen den 22. medbragte en aflarm pakke, hvor han sagde, der lå gardinstænger. Stængerne blev aldrig fundet, og Warren-kommissionen fastslog, at den aflange pakke havde indeholdt Oswalds rifle. Problemet er bare, at både Fraser og et andet vidne altid har været absolut sikre på, at parken var næsten 30 cm kortere end Oswalds rifle var, selv i skilt tilstand. The package that I've been asked many times about, the package was around uh, 24 inches, 26 inches, give or take an inch there, all oh, about this far long. And uh, so he had the uh, package cupped in his right hand and I couldn't see anything in front of him but so evidently from the walking behind him it appeared it was all up under his armpit and I've been asked many questions yes about the length of the package because the old uh, uh, rifle when you break it down it breaks down longer than the area that I described det er en af mange detaljer som fra starten så et tvivl om morgenrapporten og fik mange mennesker til at kaste sig over sagen som selvbestaltede privatdetektiv. Her forsøger en for eksempel at bevise, at den virkelige morder gemte sig nede i en afløbsrist. Konspirationsteorier om et stort komplot mod Kennedy med flere attentatmænd og efterfølgende hemmeligholdelse begyndte at florere. De kulminerede i 67 med den hidtil eneste retssag i forbindelse med Kennedy-mordet. Chefanklageren i New Orleans, Jim Garrison, anklagede en lokal forretningsmand for at have planlagt mordet på vegne af magtfulde kræfter inden for militæret og CIA. Den klassiske konspirationsteori om mordet på Kennedy fandt sin form med Garrison. Der var en konspiracy. A number of men were involved. It uh, it grew out of a an operation of which Lee Harvey Harvey Oswald was a part, assigned a role essentially as decoy. But are you saying that you will produce irrefutable evidence that more than one assassin took part in the killing of President Kennedy? Of course, there were other guns there. One of the problems is getting the information from the organization which sponsored. The mission in 1963, which contemplated uh, uh, a, a destructive mission, a terror mission, you might say, which ended up being turned against our own president. Getting this organization to release the facts is one of our major problems. Now, don't ask me what the organization is, because I can't say. But the implication clearly is the Central Intelligence Agency, your own security organization in the United States. It almost sounds like that, doesn't it? <laughs> Garrison blev dødeliggjort i Oliver Stone-filmen JFK fra 1991, hvor Kevin Costner fremstiller ham som en renskuret amerikansk held i kamp mod mørkets kræfter. President Kennedy was murdered by a conspiracy that was planned in advance at the highest levels of our government, and it was carried out by fanatical and disciplined cold warriors in the Pentagon and CIA's covert operation apparatus, among them Clay Shaw here before you. Garrison var dog langt fra at være en held. Han var anklaget for korruption og storhedsvandvid, og var berygtet for tvivlsomme juridiske metoder. Garrison brugte en år hypnose for at få sit hovedvidende, en psykisk ustabil college-student med navn Perry Rosso, til at sige, hvad han skulle. He used hypnosis, he used sodium pentothal through serum. And I've got a copy of that tape, and it's the most bizarre thing. Dr. Fatter leads him down and said, now Perry, you're entering a room here. Who do you see? And he described, he said, do you see a, a very large white-haired man? Well, that's Clay Shaw, six foot four, white-haired. And that's the first he ever heard of it from him. Garrison tapped the sand, but won the fight on the American side. For that day today, jeg tror, at flertal af amerikanere mere på konspirationsteorierne end på Warren-kommissionen.
Men hvem myrdede så Kennedy, hvis ikke det var lige Harvey Oswald? Ja, det er konspirationsfolkene stærkt uenige om. Nogle tror, at det var USA's militærindustrielle kompleks, fordi Kennedy ville trække amerikanske soldater ud af Vietnam. Andre tror, at det var CIA, fordi han ville skære ned på efterretningstjenesten. Blandt de sædvanlige mistænkte er også eksilkubanerne i USA. De var nemlig rasende på Kennedy, fordi han ikke ville give amerikansk luftstøtte til deres forsøg på at invadere Castros Cuba to år for inden. Og så er der selvfølgelig den sejlivede teori om, at mafiaen stod bag, fordi Johns bror Robert Kennedy, der var justitsminister, havde sat hårdt ind mod den organiserede kriminalitet. På Dile Plaza, 40 år efter mordet, faldbydes der bøger og brochurer, der skal bevise konspirationen mod Kennedy. Flere hundrede tusind turister kommer forbi hvert år, og de lytter opmærksomt. Um, I don't I think it was some sort of conspiracy. I don't think he acted alone. This is a book here on the conspiracy. This is put out by Robert Groden, okay? And this has over 300 original photos. I would hate to think that it's all true that our, you know, government lied to us and I'm not, I don't know for sure, but there's a lot of evidence that just contradicts what the government said. I kind of had settled on it was probably Oswald was heavily involved, but after talking to some of the people here, I'm not so sure anymore to be honest with you. So it's der er så godt et helt museum i Dallas, der udelukkende er dedikeret til konspirationsteorier. Når så mange tror på en konspiration, skyldes det ikke mindst, at både FBI og CIA holdt vigtige informationer hemmelige for offentligheden. De ville blandt andet dække over den pinlige kendskærning, at de ikke havde kunnet forhindre mordet, selvom FBI havde haft Oswald under observation siden hans hjemkomst fra Sovjetunionen. Efter mordet brændte en FBI-agent lige frem en vred note, som Oswald havde skrevet til ham i protest mod overvågningen. Selv den ledende FBI-efterforsker erkender i dag, at det var fatalt. Destruction of that note, similar to what happened in Watergate, it lost made people lose confidence in branches of the federal government, and that's regrettable. Journalisten og forfatteren Jim Miles er alle konspirationsteoriers fader. Han har efterforsket mordet næsten fra dag 1 i 1963, og hans bog Crossfire, Krydsild, dannede basis for Oliver Stones JFK-film. think what happened there was is that a consensus was reached among the military the mafia the ca anti Castro groups and the CIA that the problem was in the White House and that Kennedy had to go and once that consensus was reached then certain levels within the intelligence community felt like they were free to set the thing up kill the president and knowing that it would be covered up from the very top which it was. Oswald had ret siger Mars, da han sagde han kun var en sønnebog. Well, being a government operative, it was easy enough to maneuver Oswald around and, and set him up as a pro-Castro, handing out pro-Castro literature on the streets of New Orleans and Dallas, and then get him a job there overlooking the motorcade route. And then you ambush Kennedy in Dealey Plaza, and you leave behind a rifle that can be traced to Oswald. Denne, den såkaldt magiske kugle, spiller en central rolle i konspirationsteorien om, at Oswald ikke var alene om mordet. I alt fandt man nemlig tre tomme patronhylstre i skolebogslaget. En af kuglerne var en forbier, en anden det dødbringende skud mod Kennedys hoved. 
Tilbage havde Oswald altså, hvis det var ham, kun én kugle. Men der blev fundet syv skudsår i Kennedy og manden foran ham i limousinen, Texas-guvernøren John Connolly. Alle de syv sår skulle altså være forårsaget af én eneste kugle. If the single bullet theory doesn't work and one of the bullets did not cause all these wounds, then another bullet caused all those wounds and now you got four bullets. That would mean two shooters, at least two shooters. Warren rapporten forklarede det med at kuglen først gik gennem Kennedys ryg og derefter gennem Connerlys bryst, hånd og lår. Men den forklaring er ifølge meget latterlig, for hvis man tegner den på et diagram, ser kuglens bane stadig ifølge Mars sådan her ud. Hertil kommer, at kuglen, der skulle have forårsaget syv skudsår på to mænd, blev fundet næsten uskat. Da jeg indsolgte til injury, de faktisk viste os den bullet, der var fundet på en stretcher i Parkland Hospital, der ikke kunne conclusively be traced to either Connolly or Kennedy. In fact, it was in a public hallway. And they said, that's the bullet that caused all these wounds. Well, it's ridiculous. Here's the same type ammunition, and it was fired just into the wrist bone of a human cadaver. And you see the whole tip of it's blunted. Here's this bullet that entered Connolly's wrist bone, And it's perfectly okay. So apart from that, it's, it's virtually it's pristine. pristine. Exactly. Alene røntgenbillederne af kuglefragmenter i Connerlys håndled viser ifølge Mars umuligheden af den magiske kugle. And you can see where the bullet shattered his main wrist bone, but you can also see these little white dots. Those are pieces of bullet. There were more pieces of bullet left in Governor Connolly's wrist than is missing from the bullet that the government says caused the wound. It's just a big fabrication. Skolebogslaget er i dag det officielle museum for Kennedy-mordet. Museets kurator er en af Warren-rapportens stærke kritikere, men han mener ikke, der endnu er fremlagt afgørende beviser for en konspiration. Does that mean there wasn't a conspiracy? No, it doesn't. There could have been, but it, has, it hasn't been found as yet. Fragmenterne i Connerlys håndled kan for eksempel have været så papirtønde, at de godt kan være kommet fra kuglen, selvom kuglen bagefter fremstod næsten uskadt. I øvrigt er den magiske kugle ikke helt så uskadt som påstået. Den er blandt andet en anelse skæv. Og konspirationsfolkens diagram af kuglens bane gennem Kennedy og Connolly er fejlagtig ifølge Mac. The conspiracy folks have this tortuous zigzag back and forth. Well, that never happened. No one ever said that happened and the men were lined up in a way where it's a straight through shot. Whether it happened or not, I don't know. Rekonstruktioner viser, at en kugle i lige og nedadgående bane fra skolebogslagerets femte sal teoretisk kunne være gået gennem Kennedys ryg og fortsat gennem Connerlys bryst og højre hånd for til sidst at ende i Connerlys lov. Det kræver imidlertid, at skuddet ramte Kennedy tilstrækkeligt højt op på ryggen. Men, siger konspirationsteorierne, den forudsætning holder lige præcis ikke. I obduktionsrapporten, underskrevet af Kennedys egen læge, er såret nemlig aftegnet længere nede på ryggen. Warren report what it states in their conclusions is not supported by their own documentation. Here's the autopsy report, and it says a second wound occurred at the posterior back, at the level of the third thoracic vertebra, which is below the shoulder blades. If you'll bend down, the third thoracic vertebra is right about right about there. And they, here's your spinal column, so the wound would have been just about right here. And then they say they had a wound that came out right about the Adam's apple uh, in the neck. 
And it's not possible because he was standing. Well, five floors up. Yes. He's on the sixth floor of a building and he's shooting down. And if a bullet comes down and strikes him in the back, how can it suddenly course upwards and come out his throat? Men selvfølgelig står heller ikke denne påstand uimodsagt. Tens of thousands of, of documents are in these cases that I've used to do TV work and books and so forth and articles. Gus Rosso er en anden efterforsker, der har skrevet den stærkt roste bog, Live by the Sword, at leve ved sværet. Rosso, som har forsket i Kennedy-mordet siden 70'erne, er tidligere konspirationsmand, men tror nu, at Oswald gjorde det. Argumentet om, at obduktionsrapporten udelukker et nedadgående skud fra femte sal mod Kennedy, blev ifølge Rosso tilbagevist af en kongresundersøgelse helt tilbage i 70'erne. Now they have what they call the anatomical position drawings, but the real life position changes when as soon as you sit or stand or anything. So you can't extrapolate those drawings to him sitting in a car. It shifts. That's been misunderstood. The House Committee explained that very well. Uh, that uh, what looks like an upward trajectory up through the back, as soon as you sit, it's a downward. Tilbage står der jo stadig uoverensstemmelser mellem obduktionsrapporten og andre vidneudsavn. Og det er den slags stof, konspirationsteorier er lavet af. Blandt andet sagde lægerne her på Parkland Hospitalet i Dallas, hvor præsidenten blev behandlet lige efter attentatet, at Kennedy havde et gabende hul i baghovedet. Ifølge eksperter i skydevåben ville det betyde, at Kennedy blev skudt forfra og ikke bagfra, hvor Oswald befandt sig. Men på fotografier fra Bethesda Hospitalet i Maryland, hvor Kennedy blev obduceret samme nat, er baghovedet helt uskat. Most of the medical people who treated President Kennedy here in Dallas saw a big hole in the rear or right rear of the president's head. The autopsy photographs and x-rays conducted in, in Washington that night show the big hole here and no hole back here. So they don't make sense. Der florerer også mere kuriøse påstande om obduktionen. Blandt andet, at Kennedys kiste under transporten fra Dallas til Washington blev bortført, og livet kirurgisk ændret inden obduktionen. Dette får at skjule skudspor fra andre steder end Oswald i skolebogslaget. Disse og andre mere kulørte påstande stammer ofte fra folk, der først er stået frem mange år efter mordet, eller har ændret deres oprindelige vidneforklaring. We had a good many people changing their stories, and uh, I'm not uh, I'm not surprised at the civilian people doing it. But we even had had some of our police officers change their story a little bit, enhance their uh, activities in it. I should say when they saying they've done more than they actually did. So yeah, it's kind of a thing that uh, I don't know. It's kind of a virus that takes hold of these people and make them want to. Get become more involved in it than they actually were. De har prøvet, om de kunne. Ja, vi har prøvet ganske vist uden patroner i at at tage ladegreb når og hårdt sigt i mænds. Og jeg kunne altså uden forberedelse og øvelse gøre det på 4,8 sekunder. Mange har, som her på Dansk TV få dage efter mordet, spurgt om Oswald med sin mandlige kakano rifle virkelig kunne affyre tre skud så hurtigt, som kommissionen mente, nemlig på cirka 6 sekunder. En uh, matchfigur på en afstand af 100 meter, og i den ene serie var det en uøvelig skud, og han afleverede de tre skud på uh, 5,6 sekunder. Militærmanden her var ikke i tvivl. Men en ting er at skyde hurtigt. Noget andet er også at ramme. I marinekorpset var Oswald en middelmodig skytte, men som marinesoldat selvfølgelig bedre end manden på gaden. Sådan så målet ud i Reflens teleskopsigte, og utallige eksperter har prøvet gennem årene. The bottom line is that uh, very few people have come close. Uh, to either the timing or the accuracy and to my knowledge no one has gotten the timing and accuracy uh, but that doesn't mean he couldn't do it there's only possible three shots 
within the six second time frame. But now here's the problem. You can almost do that and I'll demonstrate. Of course, keep in mind that I'm familiar with this and I know what I'm doing. All right, you get one free shot because it's already cocked. So you go, you aim, you sight, bam, bam, bam. All right, now that almost made the tit six seconds. But look what I was doing. I had no time to aim, and it didn't take into account that when this thing fires, bam, you get a, you get a, a recoil, and you have to, uh, and then you have to lower it to cock it, and then you have to regain your picture, and you're at a moving target going downhill and laterally away from you. It's almost an impossible shot. Warren-kommissionen analyserede Abraham Zapruders berømte amatørfilm af mordet for at beregne den samlede varighed af skuddene. Men udsynet til limousinen er på et tidspunkt spærret, og derfor er det umuligt at sige præcist, hvor lang tid det tog. Warren-kommissionen vurderede det tog 5,6 sekunder, men tilføjede, at det kunne have taget yderligere et par sekunder. They were trying to prove the worst case scenario so everybody would have to believe Oswald did it. That didn't mean that they knew that it was 5.6 seconds. They said in case it's 5.6, in case it's that small, he still could have done it, but it could have been as much as 9 seconds. In fact, if you look at the film closely now, the Zapruder film, you will see people start reacting. They all look, their, their heads move, they look back. At, and when you interview the people in the film, they say, well, we reacted when we heard a shot. Well, if you look at their first reactions and then the headshot, it's about nine seconds. Now, any Marine marksman, anyone, scoring two hits in nine seconds uh, is not that difficult. Som et eksperiment gentager vi nu de meget skydeøvelse i to varigheder. Så kan seerne selv prøve at vurdere, om Oswald kunne have ramt to gange ud af tre. Først med de 5,6 sekunder, som Warren-kommissionen hældede til. Bam! 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 Derefter de 8,36 sekunder, som nyere analyser giver Oswald til de tre skud. Bam! 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 Og det er næsten blevet det til 6 sekunder. Spørger man konspirationsfolk, hvorfra Kennedy blev skudt, hvis ikke fra Oswald i skolebogslageret, peger de fleste på græshøjen ved siden af. Some of the Secret Service agents thought the gunfire was from an automatic weapon fired to the right rear of the president's car, probably from a grassy knoll to which the police rushed, and that was confirmed a few minutes ago by Mr. and Mrs. Nunley. Sapruderfilmen synes at bekræfte teorien om et skud fra græshøjen. Skolebogslaget med Oswald ligger til venstre, det vil sige bag limousinen. Så man skulle tro, at skud herfra ville få Kennedy til at falde forover, det vil sige mod højre. Men i det afsluttende skud kastes Kennedys hoved voldsomt bagud mod venstre. Det tyder på et skud forfra, det vil sige fra højre, hvor græshøjen ligger. Så so evidence is clear from the strike here, and it throws him to the left rear against the seat, then a shot came from the right front, the grassy knoll, the infamous grassy knoll. Det blev også slået fast med syv tommer søm i denne scene i DFK-filmen. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. Men Warren-kommissionens tilhængere har adskillige modargumenter. For eksempel siger flere prominente fysikere, at det kan være den såkaldte jet-effekt, der har slynget Kennedys hoved tilbage mod skudretningen. I Florida, hvor nogle scientists der har sat nogle skull på en sæt af skull på en stepladder, fyldt det med en slags kind of gelatin-type substance. And they got back at the right distance at the right height, 
and fired into it, and every time they fired into that skull, it jumped back towards them. Her ses et forsøg med et kranium, der bliver beskudt fra venstre og falder mod skudretningen, ligesom Kennedys hoved. And the explanation is that when the bullet entered the skull and then exited over here, it created a jet effect and kicked the head back. And like I say, they're much smarter at that than I am, so I'll have to accept their explanation. The idea was is that you've got a little bitty hole uh, where the bullet comes in and a great big hole where it comes out, and when it comes out, that pushes pressure and pushes the body this way. Well, I want to tell you that's malarkey, <laughs> all right? because I have been deer hunting many times and I've never seen a deer fall towards me. Krashøen er også hjemsted for den mystiske Secret Service mand i sort. Et fænomen, der er blevet en klassiker i al konspirationsteori. Seconds after the shooting, a Dallas police officer standing almost directly below the window of the book depository started running toward the grassy knoll. A woman said they're shooting the president from the bushes, so he ran down the street here. And he rounded the corner and he encountered a man dressed in a coat and tie who showed him Secret Service credentials and said, I'm with the Secret Service, uh, there's nothing going on up here. So the cop left him alone. The problem with that is the Secret Service didn't have anyone in Dealey Plaza at any time. It's one of the reasons that conspiracy believers have something to talk about. Er de forvirret af de mange modstridende påstande? Det er de ikke ene om. I 70'erne nedsatte USA's kongres et udvalg, der efterforskede mordet på ny. Efter et års arbejde med nye vidner og tekniske undersøgelser, var udvalget nået frem til, at Oswald var den eneste gerningsmand. Men så dukkede der pludselig helt nye akustiske beviser op. Back in the mid 70s, the theory was advanced, and I'm the one who started it that the assassination may have been recorded inadvertently by one of the police motorcycle officers in the motorcade. And the House Assassinations Committee in the late 70s took this theory seriously. They located what they thought was the original Dallas Police uh, Department recording of the radio communications. They had experts analyze the recording. The experts found there were four shots, not three. And of the four, the third came from the grassy knoll. The others came from the book depository. So based on that, primarily, the House Assassinations Committee concluded that there was a conspiracy to kill President Kennedy, although Oswald was the one who actually killed him. So the bottom line on this is that there are two official versions of what happened. The Warren Commission saying Oswald did it alone. The House Assassinations Committee saying Oswald did it with help. And unless something new comes out, that's the way history is going to record the Kennedy assassination. It's up in the air. Senere undersøgte USA's videnskabsakademi de akustiske beviser og konkluderede, at kongresudvalget havde taget fejl. Så også her bølger diskussionerne frem og tilbage. Det er det mest udforskede mor i verdenshistorien. Alligevel er der rygende uenighed om stort set alle detaljer. Der er skrevet tusindvis af bøger og artikler for og imod konspirationsteorierne. Og alene hele debatten om den magiske kugle ville kræve en hel aftens udsendelse på tv. Mange vidneudsagn og tekniske beviser peger på lige Harvey Oswald. Men der er så mange løse ender og mystiske detaljer, at der også i de næste 40 år vil være masser af stof for konspirationsfolkene og deres modstandere. Hey, it's more fun to believe in conspiracy for one thing. It's, we, we all grew up on these mysteries on television and even in radio before that. It's, it's the hardest thing in the world to say that these two losers, Jack Ruby and Lee Harvey Oswald, could change the world. You have the mistrust of government in the United States. They lied to us about Vietnam. They lied to us about Watergate. They're even investigating, reinvestigating whether we knew about Pearl Harbor ahead of time. And all this corrodes trust. You put that with the, the, the willingness to sort of enjoy mystery and the distrust, and it's a natural. Then you have further all the conspiracy theorists out to make a buck. That is an arguing point that it was in a CIA document that was issued back in the 70s, which told some of their agents how to respond to critics of the Warren Commission. 
And one of their key things was, well, say they're just trying to make money off of it. Well, excuse me, but don't we all have to have money to live? Doesn't the New York Times print stories so people read it so they'll buy the newspaper, so they'll buy advertising so they can make money? You know, doesn't the government tax us so they can make money? I mean, making money is not, uh, is not in and of itself reason to deny somebody's information. Yes, there have been some flaky books written about the Kennedy assassination, and yeah, there's a lot of people who've tried to write articles and generate interest in this whole thing, but uh, that's, that's not, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be there if the conspiracy hadn't existed in the first place. The reality is, 40 years after the Kennedy assassination, there is no strong evidence of any kind that indicates anything other than Lee Harvey Oswald. Now, that doesn't mean that there wasn't a conspiracy of some sort. There could have been. There's just no evidence of it.